Brother Barnes, uh, Brother Faithful, can you, can you hear us? Okay, that's why we're trying to, trying to check. Uh, it's 10 o'clock, uh, speaking with so uh, whenever you're ready. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Dick. Uh, this morning, and I hope everyone have a good, a good week this week, and have yeah. come to church today for this service today, and our Sunday school lesson on the day, so we're going to go home up this morning and ask Mother Bond and Brother Faith and Mother Bond to give us a song this morning and Brother Faith and give us a prayer this morning. Our lesson today is from the book of Acts, the 8th chapter, uh, 29 verse through 40. And the subject is breaking down barriers. <clears throat> As our, our lesson begins with verse 20, 29, but... <clears throat> But really, that if you back up to verse 25, and, and it says that, you know, after they were testifying and preaching in Samaria, Peter and John returned to Jerusalem. They stopped at several Samaritan villages along the way to preach the good news to them. But the angel of the Lord spoke to Philip and told him to go another way. He told Philip to get up and go, go over to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to the Gaza, the Gaza Desert. And then Philip got up and went, and he met an Ethiopian eunuch who had great authority on a, on a Candace, queen of Ethiopia. 
He had gone to Jerusalem to worship and was on his way back. His returning to Ethiopia in his chariot, reading Isaiah, <clears throat> the, Holy, the Holy Spirit told Philip, said, go over and walk alongside the chariot. <clears throat> And Philip heard him. He heard the unit reading from the prophet Isaiah and called and asked him, said, do you understand what you're reading? He said, no. And he said, I need help. I can't understand it. How can I understand without some help? And he invited Philip into the chariot with him. And, you know, this is what he was reading as the sheep led to slaughter and, and quiet as a lamb being sheared, he was silenced, saying nothing. And that's in Isaiah 53, 7 through 8. And then in his, he said, in his humiliation, he was denied justice. Who shall describe his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch asked Philip, said, tell me, who is the prophet talking about? himself or is he talking about somebody else and they rode and as they rode along they came to a body of water and the unit says you know what keeps me from being baptized now i want to go get home and be baptized mm -hmm. philip said if you believe with all your heart and, and he said i believe that jesus is the son of god and he stopped the chariot, and they went down to the water, and Philip baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch never saw him again, but he went on his way rejoicing. And then Philip showed up again at Azotus. He preached the good news there, and in every city along the way, as he traveled to Caesarea, now, when we, we're looking at some of the things in this lesson, first of all, Philip was led by the Spirit. And, and uh, this begins with the angelic appearance, much like that, you know, with Mary in Luke and with Jesus in Matthew 4, 11, and the disciples at Matthew 5, and Matthew 28, 5 through 7. Philip is approached by an unknown heavenly messenger. Uh, who direct him to witness in a most unlikely place and to a most unlikely person. He was directed <clears throat> to a deserted road south of, south of Jerusalem, leading to Gaza. He obeyed the divine order and found himself in the company of an Ethiopian eunuch, <clears throat> who was the governor, who was the government treasurer for the queen of Ethiopia. Now, Ethiopia was in the northeastern part of Africa. It was near the current of Sudan, what is now called Sudan. And at that time, most of the people that lived there were black. <clears throat> and if you notice uh, how the spirit breaks down all the barriers to salvation. Look how he's breaking the barriers down one at a time. The, the man Philip approached was a eunuch. Where, where, where they are usually males who are used to keepers of the harem, and they are also treasures. See, they were they were trustworthy people. They were loyal, and they and, and they were God. They were trustworthy. They were loyal. You could depend on them. And and, the, and he was this particular one was a God fearing Gentile, but he was. He was not allowed full membership to the Jewish faith because of who he was. He could visit the temple, but he couldn't go in. And the man was reading from the book of Isaiah. The spirit directed Philip to stand near the chariot. And you know, uh, <clears throat> when Philip heard him read that aloud, Philip was thinking to himself now, do he know what he's doing? Do he know what he's saying? Do he understand? And the eunuch said, no, I need help. Mm -hmm. And he invited Philip to come, come on, come on, ride with me. Ride with me for a while. 
And when Philip got through explaining everything and telling him about the good news, he said, yeah, I want that. I want that. He was ready to be baptized. <clears throat> and he was telling the first water they saw, he said, what keeps me from being baptized here now? Mm -hmm. I, uh, I want to be baptized now and make this thing legal and everything. And he says, and, and Philip, Philip, after he had all this all explained it to him, that's when the, the man believed. And, and you want, and you see how this uh, this effect, this is a positive effect of Philip following the Spirit. He let the Spirit lead him. He followed the Spirit to do whatever it told him to do. You know, in this case, and, and, and you look at this now. There was a triple barrier that was washed away: the barrier of race, mm -hmm. the barrier of culture, and physical makeup. That uh, was all that was washed away. And, and uh, that was washed away and removed. And the unit were received. He, he was re, <clears throat> the unit was, he was restricted from being a full member of the Jewish religion because of he was a unit. He would also have to give up his full identity to be a new convert. He didn't want to do that either. Then he suffered for being black. This was widespread in Greek and Roman society they treat it just like we are treated in this society. But now he received a full acceptance <clears throat> in the Christian faith and all the barriers to the full acceptance and personhood had been washed away. <clears throat> and the unit <clears throat> could identify, he, you know, he could identify, as he was reading Isaiah, he could identify with that injustice, what that, that was talking about. Because he saw how it was with him. He made the long journey and all he could do was come well, to the door on the outside. He wasn't allowed to go in. And his situation was not his fault. It said this happened to him as he was a boy. When they were young boys. And these people, they, they knew they'd be faithful to the queen. They would be faithful to the treasury. They could trust them. But it was not his fault that he was in that situation. It's like it's not our fault that we're black. Right. God decided who we, who he wanted, what color he wanted, and mm -hmm. how he wanted us built and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And he didn't have any control. Well, this unit didn't have any control either. And as he looked and he thought about how how all of this was, he said, you know, he 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 could read what he he could read and what uh, Philip had explained to him. It fit. He could understand. He said, I know. I know how we fail. He says, and I can identify with him. The injustice, the trucked up charges and all that. And he says, uh, he told him, he said, you know, when we look at our situation, because we see how what he's saying here. He identified with Isaiah, the, the passage in Isaiah. And we can identify with the unit. Because, like I said, you know, we have to deal with so many injustices. And, you know, many of our people, they are killed or harmed while sleeping in their own homes. Sometimes on the job. Sometimes while worshiping in the church. Mm -hmm. Driving. And so, sometimes, you know, and some of these people are harmed or killed by the very person who's supposed to serve and protect them. Mm -hmm. So I understand what, you know, the unit understood what that passage said about Christ. And, and I understand what the unit says about him because we are going through the same thing. Mm -hmm. On top of all of that, they wouldn't let him, wouldn't accept him into the Jewish faith, although that's all he had going at that time. They didn't accept him, but still he, got, he was also punished for being black. And, you know, like I said, we get in trouble driving while black. How else are we going to drive? Mm -hmm. Anything we do is going to be done while black. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing we can do about it but trust in the Lord. That's right. But, you know, but thank God he doesn't judge us on, on our physical makeup, where we come from, how much education we got, or anything like that. Thank God he doesn't do it just like that. 
Because if he did, we would be in big trouble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it, God, he died for everybody. He died for all people. Amen. We can always keep that in mind. That's right. Mm -hmm. We can always know that no matter how we treat each other, how other people treat us, God still loves us. That's right. He died for all of us. And I know times be tough. Sometimes you just wonder, you know, where is God in all this? He's right there. That's right. He's right there. We may not feel it. We may not think we don't see any difference in our circumstance. But the only thing we can do is hold on. Mm -hmm. We're at a situation in our life. We're at, we at a crossroad in our life now that you you just got to have. That's right. You you know if you're not when you look around and see the sun is almost down. As they used to sing that song, the evening shades appear. Mm -hmm. And and it's you know it's just about going home time. Whether we you know. Whether the Lord come first or whether he takes us one or two at a time or whatever. But I'm just saying, the road is short for all of us. Mm -hmm. The young and the old. That's right. Because you don't know how many, how long you're going to be here. That's right. And Jesus is all we got to depend on. Mm -hmm. And thank God, like I said, he's going to judge us because of our background. or You know, these are not all these things. They're not barriers to us being accepted by God. Because he died, like I said, he died on the cross for all of us. Not just the Jewish or the whites or the Japan, Japanese or whatever. No, no, all of us. Mm -hmm. He made us all. We all belong to him. And we can always count on him. Mm -hmm. And see, Philip understood this. And, and that's why he allowed the spirit to carry out the most holy purposes through him. And we have to be to a point that we allow the Holy Spirit to use us in any way that it wants to. Because we don't ever know when God wants us to do something. That's right. We don't ever know. Philip was with the other disciples or the apostles, they call. And while he was there, the, when they got ready to leave, they went their way. But the Spirit told Peter, I mean, told Philip, no, you go on this way. I want you to go this way. Mm -hmm. We have to live so that We'll know when the Spirit telling us to do something that's maybe different. Maybe we we're following the crowd and the Spirit said, no, I want you to go this way. Or I want you to go down and do this or do that. Uh, if we live in a way so that we have to live in a way so we can hear the Spirit. See, we hear a lot of things. There's a lot of voices calling us, especially if you're trying to live the life. There's a lot of voices just calling us. But we have to be able to discern the voice of God. Mm -hmm. So that when we do move, when we make a move, we know what we're doing. That's right. And see, once you, if you're in the, if, if you're with God, you know that God is going to look out for you. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, no matter what happens, you go on the road that he tells you to go. Now, look how he told Philip to go on that deserted road. And you see, this was what Philip was thinking when they said, preach it to the end of the earth. And at that time, they said that uh, Africa was considered basically on the edge of the world. So that's, that's where Philip went to spread the gospel. Mm -hmm. and, and you can imagine when the unit went back to his village, just think what he could have told them. And, and he could have he could have preached that to them, told them the experience that he had, and perhaps the whole village might could have been saved mm -hmm. through that one person. We just don't ever know. And so, <clears throat> the, you know, the, there was a village, there was a lot of those uh, people called eunuch there, and so they all was treated bad. And on top of that, they were black. So, and like I said, we can identify with them. And we know. And do we, you know, do we allow the Spirit of God to, to spread through us in every part of our being, helping us make decisions, that a decision that includes those who are who are considered rejected, those who are rejected. Do we think about those and put them in our circle of friends? When we see people being mistreated or seeing people that we think don't fit in our circle. 
What is our circle? Who is our circle? You know, mm -hmm. these things we have to be careful. Who's, mm -hmm. Whose measuring stick are you using? Mm -hmm. uh, who, who determines, who are you to determine who fits in what category? Mm -hmm. Only God knows that. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't want me for your friend. That may be all right. Maybe we're not close. But we can all be nice, speak to each other, right. and we can Amen. be nice. Amen. And we can show love. Yes. But the thing about it is, Sometimes we just decide that you don't fit in my world, mm -hmm. so we go on. We overlook a lot of people that's going through a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just don't understand. You know, these people that are going through, I'm sure sometimes they just don't understand, like, what in the world is going on? And what's wrong with me? And all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You're going through a lot of things. You can imagine if someone else was going through it with you, if someone was close to you doing it, they said that when you're going through, you got a friend that divides the trouble yes. and it would multiply the joy. Mm. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to think about that. You have to be considerate of other people. It seems like the world we live in today is me, me, my, mm. and my family, and bam, that's it. Mm. You know, nobody else matters. But everybody matters. Yes. That's right. We matter to God and we should matter to each other. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. If I don't see you in a while, I need to ask somebody, have you seen Deacon Bree? Mm -hmm. Have you seen Deacon Ray May? I haven't seen him in a few months. Is it all right? Somebody ought to inquire yeah. mm -hmm. and, and ask how you, you know, see how you're doing. Mm -hmm. Because you don't ever know. Each one of us come this morning, and I'm sure so many, some of you are wondering, you know, like how the, they talked about the weather's going to be rough this morning. Mm -hmm. And then the weatherman said, this is a good morning for sleeping in. And I thought, it won't be for me. Mm. <laughs> Unless it gets real stormy right, like it was right, earlier in the week. Right. But if the, you know, if the Lord allows me, I'm going to get up and go. And if you don't tell me otherwise, yes. I know I'm supposed to go. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to pick another day for a sleeping, but it wouldn't be today. Mm -hmm. Because this could be my last day. Mm -hmm. I will, when Jesus comes, when he calls me, I want him to catch me working. I'm working. Or I'm down Amen. to a point that I can't do nothing. But maybe Lee Williams said, just wave my hand. Amen. Wave my Amen. hand if I can't do nothing else. Mm -hmm. So this little time that we got here, we got some work to do. That's right. And we don't have, well, you know, we ain't got long. We got some work to do. And if you look at the if you look at the world, look around, and around about 3 o'clock in the evening, or 3 or 4, look at them trees. Now, it's, a, it's a sad, kind of lonesome situation. You look out. Ain't nobody out there mm -hmm. that you knew. All your folks are gone. Most of us come from pretty large side families. How many we got left now? My family was six, seven. There's only two of us left now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some people, there's only one left. Some people, the whole family's gone. Mm -hmm. So we ain't going to be here forever. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and we may as well do the best we can with what we got to work yeah. with now. That's right. And, you know, the good thing about it is now, you know, we got so many advantages that our ancestors didn't have. Mm -hmm. They didn't have Bible, and then some of them didn't read. Mm -hmm. All of us can read. Mm -hmm. We got several Bibles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we just got so much resource that we got that we can work with. So we, you know, we really ain't got no excuse. All we got to do is sit down, get quiet, and study. But it's a, it, it's kind of it's kind of sad the way things are going now. Mm -hmm. But God is still on the throne. Oh, no yeah. matter what happens, you know, and if, and if we, and you know, if if when we die, if someone come through and we get murdered or martyred or however you want to call it, that's all right because if we got it made with God, it don't matter really how we die. Because either way, if someone kills you, if you go right quick, that means you took the expressway. <laughs> <laughs> so they're not going to win. Either way you look at you with Jesus, you're going to win. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's the key to the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You are going to win. So this is why, you know, Philip, Philip wasn't the kind of uh, preacher that was worried about a big church with the nice building, the cathedral ceiling and all that stuff. 
No, no. Philip just wanted to preach the word. He wanted to see the nation saved. And that's what we should be interested in. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not saying, don't get me wrong now. We got to have a building called the sun because this old building keep on leaning. Right. Mm -hmm. We got to move to another that's place. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that we don't do that. But I'm saying, as you worry about the house, the building, we also got to worry about this building in here. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Because, you know, some of us may not live to see a new building. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and, but I want to live to see how mm -hmm. I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned about my building. Mm -hmm. And, and this is what we have to work on. What is the spiritual bill? So, uh, you know, God desires to use us. He wants to use us to communicate a message of his love. And see, Philip allowed him to use him. But will we allow the Lord to use us? Do we, uh, will we allow the Lord to use us? He wants to. He wants us to be his, his spoke person. You know, he should need, when we, people see us, when we show up, I mean, they should see Jesus. That's right. They should see Jesus. That's right. There shouldn't be any problem. They, and like he said about the disciples, they would know we've been with Jesus. Mm -hmm. So um, when, we, when we go someplace, our very present, that should be that aura they call. It should be Jesus. And you don't have to preach to them. You don't have to say a lot. Just, just your presence. Mm -hmm. Your presence. We have to live so that our very presence let them know that we know the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is what uh, Philip was. Philip was preaching all of this to, to the unit. And he said, you know, he didn't understand any of it. He was reading it, but he didn't really understand it. And I can understand that. <clears throat> We can, we can always understand that. And he told him, he said, you don't have to worry about it. He said, um, this little part right here where Philip told him. And, and Philip was explaining. And, and by co he compared in the Old Testament the image, uh, the slaughter lamb to Jesus' crucifixion. And then the lamb before the shearer, that represented Jesus' silence before the Sanhedrin court. And then he said Jesus' conviction, uh, uh, his trumped up charges related to Isaiah reference to injustice. And the uh, and, and it meant that that the reference to the descendants meant that the follower would also undergo similar prosecution and suffer. Mm -hmm. And then Philip said Jesus, he saw Jesus being glorified through the resurrection and the ascension. And he showed he could he compared that he with the, he shared that with the unit. Mm -hmm. So when when after they were baptized and they come out of the water, the, the spirit snatched up Philip. He was gone, and uh, the unit didn't see him ever see him again. It said, but he was happy. He was happy because I guess he was saying where well, I was blind now I see. Mm -hmm. So he really didn't need it anymore. <laughs> But it has served a purpose, and that's the good thing about it. And you see, let's, you know, let's let the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ shine in us. Let's preach it, let's teach it, and by all means, let's live it. Are there any comments? Yes, ma'am. I just want to thank God for letting me be able to teach that wonderful lesson this morning. And like you spoke about, this man was teaching the other man. You know, we never get too old to learn anything. Mm -hmm. And one person don't know it all. So everybody can learn something from somebody every day. Mm -hmm. That's why. That's why he wants us to come together. Because he has prepared. All of us have something to offer. That's right. It's because some people think they know it all, but they don't know it all. No matter always can tell you so. No one knows it all but them. That's right. Sister Nance. Yes, sir. You know, we should be like Phil, have an open ear to the Holy Spirit. Uh-huh. You know, when God tells us so, 
we got a course, you know, a year to us. Why do you want me to go way out there? Yeah. But see, Philip led by the Spirit. He didn't question God. He just went on there for the Spirit led him to. See, God already knows. While we try to figure out things, when He called us to do stuff, we didn't know. Don't ask God a question because He already got it worked out anyway. Amen. Amen. And you see, it's all a part of His plan. And when He tells us, you know, like you said, when He asked Philip to go out there, well, somebody could have said, well, now look, you talking about way out there. Ain't nobody out there. Right. First thing He said, who out there? But God had this. This, this one person out there that he wanted Philip to minister to. Philip didn't hesitate. He said, well, do we hesitate when he tells us something to do? <laughs> <laughs> should be just as natural mm -hmm. with you as that. Mm -hmm. And you don't even have to say a word sometimes. Because yeah. yeah. sometimes uh, preaching is not what they need. Sometimes mm -hmm. a listening ear. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a shoulder to lean on. Mm -hmm. It's not always the preaching that they need. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we need teaching. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. And so, too, there, there's another thing in the, uh, that unit. It wasn't so much about you being black or being from Africa. A unit of a male that had been castrated right. to, mm -hmm. to God is equated with that word Canaanist is like Pharisee. Uh -huh. and so, it, it wasn't, it, they didn't give the Canaanist a name. But so, this unit had a very important job. Yes, it was a treasure. And to yeah. ask him to. to and, and his main focus was to God, the Queen, the Creator, the Lord, whatever. And he had time for that there, but notice that even though he couldn't go into the temple because mm -hmm. the Gentiles were not allowed to go in there, yet he was still reading. So he knew something about his learned something about the Lord while he needed to do. Mm -hmm. right. And he was willing, and, and that's what we got to do when we hear the word. And we don't understand the word. Then we try to find out what the word is saying to him. So the youth asked, how can you understand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk to we need to have the word in here. We, and, and this is, uh, if you look at a certain school lesson, it, it, each one of these companies give the characteristics of the disciple. Mm -hmm. And one of the characteristics of the disciple, we don't have to know their whole Bible, but we we got to encounter people that they ask questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and, and we need to be able to tell them about the salvation. Now, they don't tell you all what Philip told the unit. No. But it was enough for when he preached the word to and the word convinced the unit that there was something more important. 
than the Queen's credit. They were, because he had found some, he, uh, uh, whatever King told him, explained it to him about, you know, about this, what he was reading, it was enough for him to uh, seek salvation. Yeah, right when, he saw, when he saw the war, he said, what enemy? Mm -hmm. So this is what we need to do. I'm a man, a couple weeks ago, I was speaking to the lady that I really thought she was an atheist. And, 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 and when she got back to the she opened the door for me to really give the word. She said, oh, God, I never told me like this. Uh-huh. But then, then, you know, say that so hey, you did me a little, and then you come on, come on, come on, we got to go, we got, we got to go. And she called me, she really wanted to get the word of God. Uh-huh. So we, we, that, uh, we are being in sight, and, and, and therefore we have to study the word, to know the word, that when we encounter these things, you bet, I heard somebody say, we all can be teachers, we need to be, you hear me say all the time, we all need to be teachable, I need to be taught, they need to be taught, and of course, this is why we say the word of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And every second. That's one of the reasons why, uh, uh, one of the things too, uh, you know, we have very good teachers, you know, you may be able to reach somebody with your teaching that I can't reach with uh, my style of teaching. Mm -hmm. right? You can maybe be able to reach somebody with this teaching that uh, our style of teaching doesn't fit right. them. Mm -hmm. This is one of the reasons why we all work together. It's not about it's not about me, it's not about you, it's not about him, it's not about anybody. It's all about Jesus Christ. So this is the reason why uh, we, we work we work together and we encourage one another uh, because God has been far too good to me. Always. <laughs> been far too good to me for me not to tell the story. So uh, let's just continue to, to uh, encourage one another because uh, because some someday Someday is our time, and uh, we've we've got to, we've got to know enough to be able to tell her just what Jesus is done for us. That's right. You don't have to tell what He did for somebody else. Just tell what He did for you. Mm -hmm. One thing you always we always say to tell is He died for my sins. That's right. That's right. He died yeah. for everybody. Just tell me that. Actually, would they have something to say on the microphone there? Are there any other comments? Thank God for that awesome lesson. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Everybody just said everything. Mm -hmm. All right. If they are, are there any other comments? If they are, this concludes our Sunday school lesson for today. We want to thank our Sunday school teacher this morning, Sister Nancy Wooten, for doing this wonderful lesson this morning. Now we have someone from our class, uh, Amazon, or either St. Stephen, to give us a, what they learned from the lesson this morning. Someone <coughs> It's not about us, it's all about God. Amen. 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 Now we're here from the youth this morning. Youth class this morning. Minutes 
for the Anderson Chapel and St. Stephen's Sunday Church School for May 21st, 2023. Sunday School was called to order at 10 o'clock by Deacon Riggs. Opening song was Love Lifted Me by Mother Barnes. Prayer was given by Reverend Faison. Lesson topic was Breaking Down Barriers. Background passage, Acts 8, 26 through 40. Key verse, and he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. That's from 8, Acts 8, 38. Lesson was reviewed for 35 minutes by Trustee Wooten. Re remarks were given by representative from the class. Attendance is in-house 29, online 8 for a total of 37. Offering is $46. The weather is cool and cloudy. All officers remain the same. City Secretary, Sister Lois Lewis. Stand and just close out with the word, amen. 